Hello students, I am Iram Sadeem and today I will be teaching you the chapter Reproduction in Organisms. Now what is reproduction? It is a biological process by which an organism gives rise to young ones that are similar to itself. Now as you have studied earlier, there are two kinds of reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Now what is the difference between the two? In sexual reproduction, it involves the participation of two parents and it involves the fusion of gametes. Whereas in asexual reproduction, only a single parent is required and, and there is no fusion of gamete. Now first we will take up the asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction can take place through binary fission, budding, conidia, gamule formation, zoospores and bud. Now let us take a few examples of asexual reproduction. The first example as you can see is of yeast in which the process of budding takes place. A small bud is formed at the end of the cell which eventually detaches and forms the new organism. Similarly in the next figure you can see the cells of amoeba. This amoeba when it grows in size it can split into two daughter cells and this process is known as binary fission. Moving on to the next slide with few more examples. The next example is of chlamydomonas in which the zoo spores are formed. These two spores are motile microscopic structures and they are released from the parent body. They can form new organisms. Next you can see the structure, the spores formed on the fungus penicillium. And these spores are known as conidia, which are released during favorable condition. In hydra, a bud is formed at the end of the cell, which can detach from the parent. And lastly, the gamule formation in the sponge cell, which are eventually released and gives rise to new organisms. I would also like to tell you that asexual reproduction leads to the formation of clones. Now, you know what are clones? Clones are offsprings that are morphologically and genetically identical to one another as well as the parent. If we discuss asexual reproduction in plants, I would like to tell you that in plants it is referred to as vegetative reproduction or we can say vegetative propagation. Now certain units are required for the vegetative propagation of plants and they are known as vegetative propagules. Here we will take a few examples of vegetative propagules. The few examples are runner, the sucker, rhizome, tuber, offset and bulb. Let us take a few examples. The first, in the first figure you can see a potato and the small buds on the surface of potato you must also have seen in your homes. So these buds are referred to as eyes of potato. And you can just cut a slice of the potato having these buds or the entire potato for the propagation. The next is the rhizome of ginger which is used for the propagation of this plant. The third is agave of bulbil. Now what is a bulbil? It is a small bulb like structure that is formed uh, at the node of the basal of the leaf, leaf stalk. And it can give rise to roots and shoots and is used for the propagation of this plant. Uh, in the next figure D, you can see the adventitious buds on the margins of the leaf of bryophyllum. As these buds just pinch off from the leaf, they fall into the soil and they can give rise to a new plant. And the last is the offset of water hyacinth. This offset is just a branch that arises from the base of the plant. It grows horizontally for some time and then in, it goes into the soil, when it touches the soil or there it can give rise to root and shoot. Okay, so this was all about the asexual reproduction. Now, uh, if we discuss sexual reproduction, it involves the fusion of gametes. An organism can reach the reproductive phase after a certain period of time which varies from organism to organism. So the period when, the, when an organism reaches the sexual maturity, when it is capable of reproduction, 
that period is known as the juvenile phase so once the uh, organism reaches the reproductive phase it is like it can be indicated in plants through flowering and on the basis of that plants can be classified as uh, annuals biennials or perennials but this good flower once a year or they can flower twice a year or after two years now there are always some exceptions and one exception is that of the banyan tree which flowers only once in its lifetime and if we talk about one more plant that is uh, strobilanthus contiana it flowers only once in 12 years in animals the reproductive phase is uh, indicative uh, through some other signs like for example some animals start laying eggs for example lizard and uh, in the females of placental mammals certain cyclical changes take place in the ovarian activity and hormones then the cyclical changes take place in the ovary of female placental mammals of non primates such as cow buffalo deer dog this is known as estrous cycle and when the cyclical changes in the ovarian activity and hormones take place in the female placental mammals of primates it is known as menstrual cycle such as in monkeys apes and human beings now based on this animals can be classified as seasonal breeders and continuous breeders now seasonal breeders are those in which the cyclical changes take place only during a favorable part of the reproductive cycle whereas the continuous breeders are those in which the cyclical changes take place throughout the reproductive phase okay now we can classify the sexual reproduction into the pre fertilization events fertilization and the post fertilization events i'll be taking one by taking them one by one so first let us take up the pre fertilization events that is the events that happen before fertilization okay now the pre fertilization events the first is the gametogenesis and secondly the gamete transfer talking about gametogenesis as the name indicates genesis refers to the formation so gametogenesis is the formation of gametes now what are gametes gametes as you all know are reproductive haploid cells and always for fertilization there is a requirement of male and female gamete so the gametes usually are uh, dissimilar the male and female gamete are dissimilar but in some cases such as algae the gametes could be similar you cannot uh, you know uh, distinguish between the male and the female gamete and these are known as homogametes or isogametes but when the female and the male gamete are uh, differ in their structure they are known as heterogamete you heard the male gamete is usually referred to as sperm and the female gamete is referred to as ova now in plants certain plants they could be unisexual or bisexual when the male and female reproductive organ are on the same plant they are referred to as unisexual or dioecious plants for example papaya now this unis the flower if it is unisexual it could have only the male reproductive organ that is a stamen so this flower will be referred to as staminate now if the flower has only the female reproductive organ that is the pistil it will be referred to as pistillate flower certain plants have uh, both the female and the male reproductive organ they will be referred to as bisexual or monoecious the example is coconut similarly even the animals can be unisexual or bisexual most of the organisms you see are unisexual but there are some bisexual organisms for example the earthworm tapeworm leech sponges etc now when we are talking about gametes gametes are haploid cells but they could be produced by a parental body that could be haploid or diploid now if we consider the haploid plant body for example the case of bryophytes or algae so then the plant body undergoes mitosis to produce the haploid gametes but in case of a diploid parental body 
for example in human beings angiosperms gymnosperms there are specialized cells known as meiocytes which undergo meiosis to form the haploid gametes so this is all about the gamete formation now you know how the haploid gametes are formed the next stage is the transfer of gametes okay now the gamete transfer in certain plants such as bryophytes and teredophytes water is the medium for the transfer of gametes now this male gametes have to reach the female gametes because usually the female gamete is stationary the male gametes are motile so the male gametes have to reach the female gamete through the water as a medium so male gametes are released in that is the reason male gametes are released in large numbers the in seed plants the male gametes are transferred to the female gamete through the pollen and this transfer of pollen from anther of one plant to stigma of another plant or of the same plant is known as pollination now when the pollen reaches the stigma the it germinates to form a pollen tube through which the male gamete reaches the female gamete now next the very important step is fertilization fertilization is also known as syngamy which is the fusion of gametes resulting in the formation of zygote depending on where the fertilization takes place if it takes place within the body or outside the body it can be classified as external fertilization or internal fertilization in most of the aquatic organisms such as algae and fish the fertilization takes place outside the body the male the male and female gametes are released in the water and the fertilization takes place in water now one um, disadvantage of this is that the they are more vulnerable to the predators which could be a um, problem for their survival next we come to the internal fertilization which takes place in most of the terrestrial organisms where fertilization takes place in the body of the female organism but in some cases the female gamete can directly develop into a new organism without fertilization and this process is known as parthenogenesis it takes place in honey bees and in certain birds such as turkey now we come to the post fertilization events all the events after the formation of zygote are referred to as post fertilization events after the fusion of the male and female gamete is resolved into the formation of zygote then the fate of zygote depends upon the life cycle of the organism as well as the environmental conditions for example in organisms such as algae in uh, in fungi the zygote might develop a thick covering and during the favorable conditions it can germinate now what is embryogenesis embryogenesis is the formation of embryo from the zygote and this process involves cell division and cell differentiation the zygote cells undergo mitotic divisions and eventually they differentiate into tissues and organs now the animals based whether the zygote formation takes place inside the body or outside the body it can be uh, they can be classified as oviparous and viviparous organisms now oviparous organisms are those that lay eggs these eggs they have a calcareous shell for example you see the hen and the birds they lay eggs and uh, the young one hatches out after a certain period of incubation whereas in viviparous organism the zygote is formed inside the body of the female and after a certain stage of development it is delivered out from the female body now talking about the post fertilization events in plants the zygote is formed inside the ovule which develops into the embryo the ovule forms the seed and ovary forms the fruit and this fruit is covered by a protective covering known as perica and after when the conditions are favorable the seed is uh, dispersed and eventually germinates into a new plant so this was all about the first chapter where we discuss the underlying principles of reproduction and hope you enjoyed it thank you and in the next video we'll be discussing in detail about the sexual reproduction in flowering plants
Thank you. Stay safe.